Here's a question I get asked all the time. Andy, what is a RAW file? Andy, why can't I see RAW files in normal image viewing program? Why can't I see RAW files on my iPad or my mobile phone? Why do you keep telling us that a RAW file doesn't contain an image? Well, <laughs> it's really simple. For the majority of my landscapes, I use a Nikon D800E, which is a 36.15 megapixel Bayer pattern sensor. It measures 7,360 pixels on its long edge and 4,912 pixels on its short edge, which actually equates to about 36.15 megapixels. But what's 0.15 of a megapixel between mates, eh? So we'll just call it 36 megapixels. If you shoot Nikon, you've got a Bayer pattern sensor. If you shoot Canon, you've got a Bayer pattern sensor. If you shoot Fuji, hmm, sometimes you've got an X-Trans sensor. But if you've been out and bought a GFX, guess what? Yes, you've got a Bayer pattern sensor. Uh, but it's a lot bigger than 36 meg. But anyway, I digress. Let's just contemplate this 36 megapixel Bayer pattern sensor. It records three separate colour channels, red, green and blue, which I'm pretty certain we all know. However, this is a Bayer pattern sensor layout. And you can see that for every red pixel or photosite or blue photosite, we've got two green photosites or pixels. So basically the sensor actually records nine megapixels of red channel data. It records nine megapixels of blue channel data and 18 megapixels of green channel data. And so you can see that as last time I went to school, 18 plus 9 plus 9 equals 36. Yeah, simple, isn't it? But oh boy, does it make a mess of your pictures. So how do we take this information and end up with 36 megapixels of readable red, green and blue data in terms of colour or hue if you like and the luminosity because as you can see the way the sensor records it it's disproportionately biased towards green and that will of course give us a green cast well all raw file handlers such as lightroom camera raw capture one pro raw therapy iridium developer and all the other ones that are out there use a process called demosaicing and what demosaicing does is quite fancy really the actual word demosaicing implies that there's a mosaic to get rid of and there is if um, i come over to this image here sh a shot of um, one of the gantries at uh, jodrell bank radio telescope just up the road from me we could see yeah it's a pretty uninspiring wishy-washy flat image but at the end of the day we can see it is a conventional image that we would expect an rgb image and uh, all the colors are correct so we don't need to take it up to that sort of zoom level if we take it up to uh, a one-to-one uh, -one view we can see that it's full of detail it's full of data that we can visually recognize however if we could possibly look at the undemosaic raw file in other words the output of the camera it would look markedly different and uh, yeah there it is now it doesn't look too bad really you, some people would just think well well it's good it's just a normal image but it's got a massive green cast on it and it can't we do something about that with uh, color balance oh no 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 if we take this image up to a full 11 to 1 magnification here in Lightroom, now we begin to see something very decidedly different from a conventional RGB image. Here we can see the mosaic of the Bayer pattern and uh, its conventional red, green and blue squares. 
twice as many green as red or blue and we can see that our detail is just well it's sort of if you like gray smudges and uh, they look like gray smudges because that's pretty much what they are the actual tonality or luminosity values of a raw file are basically black and white yes they are so the tonality or detail if you like is carried in a black and white image and then the color information in terms of brightness of color and mix of red green and blue is actually contained within that mosaic and so the raw file handler in this case Lightroom has to be able to demosaic this image and uh, we'll come back to a one-to-one -one view well, well, we, yeah and now we can see that the demosaic image looks as we'd expect so how does this demosaicing work it's very simple if we go back to our little diagram again and here's our photosites these colored squares are not the photosites they are those little colored filters that sit above your photosite. The photosites are these gray squares and you have to remember that photosites are supposedly all created equal and they are all sensitive to red, green and blue light. So if we didn't have those color filters there, basically our image would record out in monochrome or some version of monochrome. It wouldn't look too brilliant but it would be impossible to produce really much in the way of accurate color within that image so we need these filters laid out in this pattern and uh, the pattern is known as a Bayer pattern and it was created by a guy called Bruce Bayer who's sadly no longer with us who used to work for Kodak and he basically formulated this color filter array that contains twice as many green filtered photosites as red or blue basically because that's the way human vision works our eyes are basically twice as sensitive to the green part of the visible spectrum as they are to either the red part or the blue part but anyway how does demosaicing work because if we think about it say this pixel here it's covered with a blue filter we have RGB in other words white light from the outside world passing through our lens and being projected onto the sensor this blue filter here filters out the red and green components of that light well that little tiny pinprick of that image which actually falls upon this single individual photosite on our sensor so this photosite here only records the luminosity value or luminance value, brightness value if you like, of the blue light that reaches it. This photosite here similarly only records the brightness value of the green light that reaches it for the simple reason that the red and blue components have been removed by this green filtered layer so basically once the exposure is finished all our photosites contain black and white gray scale luminosity values or brightness values but those brightness values correspond to the color channel which equates to the colored filter that was placed above it now in order for us to obtain an image in say Lightroom such as the one we've just looked at this one we must allocate red green and blue values to every single photosite on the center and of course we haven't got that in this scenario here with a Bayer pattern filter because this photosite only contains information about blue light this photosite here only contains information about green light and this photosite that sits under this red filter 
only contains information or brightness luminance information about red it contains no information about green or blue so what we need to do is to run this demosaicing algorithm which will then create or invent or calculate if you like to use the proper term it will calculate the blue and green values that need to be allocated to the photosite which sits underneath this red filter similarly this photosite only contains a blue value therefore the demosaicing algorithm that's being used by lightroom will invent intelligently we hope red and green values to go along with the recorded blue value so each and every one of these photosites contains a luminosity value and that luminosity value is for one color only but when our raw file handler such as lightroom interprets that raw file it creates pseudo if you like color values for the two missing color channels once that's done we go through a, a little add-on process of normalization which basically rejigs all the rgb values to negate the green cast or the green bias created in the image by having twice as much green information as it does red or blue in other words normalization removes that sticky green cast so there you go that's how demosaicing works hope you found this lesson useful if you have go and give me a like if you haven't do what you fancy i don't care and uh, if you found it useful uh, go click the subscribe button and uh, that's it i hope you found it useful as i said and uh, i shall see you again very soon not that you ever see me so i shall speak to you again very soon <laughs> Tiru.